Good morning, beautiful people of the world. Good morning. It is Tuesday. What's the day? The 26th. March 26, 2024. Yeah, because today originally was the day that I was supposed to get my keys to the house and I got them Saturday. Yes, so today is the 26th. Easter is Sunday, you guys. Man, that got hit. Easter is really early. It's going to be cold, too. It's going to be cold in Chicago. Um, First of all, let me once again say good morning. I hope everyone is doing okay. I hope everyone is doing swell. I hope that your family and friends and loved ones, everybody is doing all right. I do want to send prayers and condolences and more so prayers. I'm not sure if there was any fatalities, but I don't know if you all saw that there was a bridge in Baltimore that fell this morning, about 1.30 this morning. Uh, it was hit by a ship, some kind of cargo ship. And there was like seven cars, I guess, driving across this bridge. And the, uh, I mean, it just, it looked like something that's like a toy. And it just tumbled and went down in the water. And like seven cars went down in the water so they don't know that was breaking news when i got up this morning at my alarm clock went off at four but i didn't i was watching the news so i didn't get out of bed until like 4 30 but um yeah i mean that is just so scary so praying for um the people in baltimore and um hoping that um you know, there was there that nobody drowned. They had the uh, helicopters out um, looking for people, the um, the divers and stuff. It's just that's scary. That's really really scary. So I guess we'll get more news as the day go on. But I hope and pray that everyone is all right. So yeah, that that's scary. I mean, because I work in transportation here in, in Chicago, um, and we work on bridges. And you know, I've heard that there's a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of bridges that you know, um, you know that need a lot of work on. And, you know, the government gave a lot of cities infrastructure money to um, fix these roads and these bridges. <sighs> so my heart and my prayers go out to, um, to everybody that is being affected by that. And I have a friend whose uh, family live in Baltimore. So, um probably give him a call today but um yeah that's scary we're getting a lot of rain in chicago heavy rain we got a big huge downpour last night and then it's supposed to rain again today and it's supposed to rain today i think today and tomorrow and then it's mild right now. It's like 52 degrees. So I think it's going to get cold again. It's just weather. It's just weird. But, uh, but my prayer is that you all are doing well. So yesterday I was telling you guys um, about the negativity that I received over here on YouTube from one person. Um, I, I kind of thought that it would be something negative said, and I honestly kind of thought it would be more than one person, but my faithful, uh, subscribers who, um, rock with me all the time, I knew that I wasn't going to get that from you guys. You know, I knew that, um, this 
do, like I said, very, very weird, very weird looking, very weird acting. And for whatever reason, people feel that because they watch my YouTube channel that, and they say that they're a fan, that they, uh, they kind of like, it's like, like with him, it's almost like a, like an obsession almost to the point where, you know, um, you know, he just, I don't know. People are weird. That's all I can say. But one of my subscribers asked me to talk about you know things that I've uh, the things that I have overcome in 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 the in a lot of years or whatever I don't know how to say it how I've overcome um, I've had a lot of struggles I've had a lot of you know um, you know struggles like anybody um, I'll go all the way back to um, you know I gave you I told you all about my grandparents being murdered. I told you when I was 16, I told you all about my god sister was murdered um, in 2002, three, something like that. Uh, drive by shooting. She was shot straight through the heart. She was young. She was pregnant. She already had a daughter, um, a small child. Um, uh, I've had, you know, the, the, the most horrific thing, I've had several horrific things happen to me. My grandparents were murdered when I was 16. Then my, um, well, let me go back, even go back further than that. When I was about seven years old, my mother was a Girl Scout leader for a Girl Scout troop. One of the um, young ladies who was in my mother's, uh, that my mother was over uh, Girl Scout, her mother and father had a, a very uh, abusive relationship. And so, the people that would come to the field house where we would have the Girl Scout meetings, he, uh, there was a, they were a, hus a husband and wife. They had mm, probably four or five kids. And, um, talking about it may school it's just I can I can actually see it in my mind but anyway my mother was a Girl Scout leader and we were there on a Saturday morning we were there on a Saturday morning and um, having a Girl Scout meeting and this was in 1979 or either 1976 because I was only, I had to be about eight. Either I was, I was seven or eight years old. Ooh, I haven't talked about this in years. Um, and my mom was standing. Okay, let me go back because I'm jumping all around. So one of the young ladies who was in the Girl Scout troop, her mother and father was in a very abusive relationship where this father would beat this mom up really badly. Well, the two workers that worked for the park district, um, for the field house, they let her come and stay with them because, you know, he was beating her up. They lived across the street from the park. So I, I'm assuming he, he was angry that she had, that they had allowed her to come stay with them for a time, for a time being because he was beating her up. And so this particular Saturday morning, about 10 o'clock in the morning, while we were up there having our meeting about 10 or 11 o'clock, 
he came up to the park because the, the man who um, worked in the um, the field house, he would clean the field house up. He would clean the park all the way, you know, around the field house. He would clean the park up and everything. He, um, he came up there with a rifle and he was mad and he was saying you know I guess you know y'all let my wife stay with you or whatever and I guess they had had words before so he saw him out there cleaning up and my mother is standing up and we're facing my mother we're sitting around like on this bench and we're looking at my mom and next thing I know, we hear gunshots. And my mother's my mother turned. Literally, she she was standing there like she turned white, completely white. And I'm looking at her. I'm a little girl now, but I remember these details like they happened yesterday. Their kids were across the park okay so my mother is looking like oh my god so we heard some more gunshots so there was a bathroom inside of this field house and it was a weird weird kind of bathroom there was no handle on the inside of the bathroom for you to pull there was only a, a handle on the outside for you to open it up and um, my mother got all of the girls and told all of us to get in the bathroom get in the bathroom get in the bathroom and he shot that man so many times in his chest. And as he was shooting him, his wife drove up and saw it. And she had already, I don't know if she had already got out of the car or what, but I don't understand why she did not keep driving, but she didn't. She came and she ran up in the field house and he chased her and he shot her. She was pregnant. He shot her in the field house and he killed her. So by now, you know, somebody in the neighborhood, a lady who lived right next door to the park, she called police. He went, this man went back up in his house after he killed these two people. And so now their children who are across the park who's witnessing this, they had an older sibling. He made those kids stay across that park. And they ran, They you could hear all this like noise and yelling and it was so chaotic. He, he knew that we were in the bathroom. He knew that we were in the bathroom. And my mother, my mother that day was a hero of 20 some children. And got us all in the bathroom. And I was crying, oh I was crying. And I know he knew that it was children in that bathroom. I know he knew it. Um, we were all crouched down on the floor. And my mother was like, shh, don't say, you know, be quiet. It was very, very traumatic. It was very traumatic. I will never, ever forget the, the blood, the hole in this man's chest. I will 
will never, as long as I live, I'll never forget it. I'm 54 years old. That happened when I was eight. And I remember it like it happened yesterday. And then many, many years later, when I was 16, my grandparents were brutally murdered. Then when I was in my 20s, my god sister was murdered. Then after I had my son in 2010, my cousins, three cousins, were brutally murdered all at the same time. And then in 2016, I go to my mother's house and I find my father dead on the couch. And I've had so many tragic, you know, situations that I've been in. And um, I've overcome them with prayer. I mean, that's just really the truth. I've just overcome them. And I realize that a lot of my depression comes from those things that I've experienced in my life. I've had a lot of tragic things happen in my life. And um, I'm just being real and being transparent. I just, I've had, a, I've, I've experienced so much violence. You know, but um, I'll be back. <clears throat> you know, you all wouldn't even know who Cece was if I had been killed that day with them other kids. Um, I believe that God has always had his hand on me. He's always protected me. You know, I survived an abusive relationship with my son's sperm donor. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've had I've had some some things to happen that have been horrific. Uh, my three cousins that were murdered. Uh, this was my cousin and her two daughters. Her, her one daughter was a teenager and she had been dating this 17 year old. He was 17, they both were 17. He killed her, her mother, and her little, so their little, her little sister. This was my cousin's kids. And he killed her because she didn't want to be with him anymore. And um, so he, he, he killed them with a machete. He butchered them. And, you know, this is why I say all the time and will continue to say, you have to be careful who you're dealing with. And he, he just, this, this young man was just, he was crazy. He was nuts. He's just nuts. Hold on a second, you guys. Good morning. Can I have a large decaf coffee with ex, um, six sugar, six cream? Okay. And a sausage biscuit. Okay. That's it. Second window. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, because you just, just, you just don't know 
how nuts people, nutty people are, you know? And so that's why I'm a little paranoid or whatever you want to call it, you know, cause you know, Cause it make you paranoid when you dealt with the kind of stuff that I have dealt with. And um, people are just crazy. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Okay, here go, five. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, so he was cra he was he was he was young, but he was crazy. And um he killed them. And he killed them um in an apartment building in their apartment. Yes, great, but good. Thank you so much. Okay, have a good day. And I had already had Christopher because that happened in 2010. And that was a triple funeral, you know, that was, had to go to the funeral of three people. And it was just, my Lord. That, that was horrible. Now these cousins, the reason why I called her my cousin because she and I, we shared a cousin and I grew up with her. And so, you know, we became, you know, you know, we became good friends, you know. I mean, we, we became family, not good friends. Friends and family. But you know, I've had a lot of things to happen to me that were bad, but you know, I, I'm a firm believer that, that um, I'm a firm believer that, um, He has never given me more than I could bear. And that's a lot, you know, that's a lot in itself what, you know, I've had to go through and deal with. But he's been with me, you know, he's been with me. And uh, I should have had, uh, I should have had therapy a long time ago. Uh, I should have did therapy when I was eight from that tragic experience. I should have had been in therapy for all uh, for all of the other um, uh, you know things that have happened you know with my cousins and I should have went into therapy when my dad passed um, that was the worst feeling in the world walking in and, and, and seeing somebody you love gone uh It was just, it was just a lot, you know, it was just a lot. So in 2011, I lost my job. And that was devastating. I had worked at this job for 14 years. I had a little kid and I almost lost my mind when I lost my job. I, I believe that we all, when we have tragic things that, that happen to us, I think we all kind of like have like little miniature nervous breakdowns and we don't even know that we are having them, which is called PTSD, post-traumatic syndrome. And a lot of us don't even know that, you know, we experiencing that 
you know, we, we don't even know. Um, but I'm going to say this to you all, having shared what I shared. Um, this is why we have to be careful how we treat people. Because you don't know what anybody has gone through. And you don't know the level You don't know the level of a person's breaking point. You understand what I'm saying? We think we know people, but we really don't. And people are... affected by different things. And they deal with things differently. Some people, you know, turn to drugs and alcohol and and some people get into gambling or they do other little destructive things to try to deal with what's going on with them. So, you know, um, just be careful sometimes how you treat people because like I said, you don't know really, you really don't know what somebody is going through or what somebody has been through. You may think you know, but you don't. And that's just the truth. So, I could tell you all more things about CC, things that have happened to me, but I will say that, I will say this. I've overcame, over have overcome and have gotten past and through a lot of things because I had and I have a personal relationship with God and sometimes you know as human beings we don't understand why God allows things to happen the way that they do but we also know that there's a devil you know and he's just as he's he's very wicked you know and and he he comes to kill and destroy you know um I have so many friends that have lost children last year. It's unbelievable. And they really going through, you know. And so, you know, I just try to stay up, prayed up, you know. I just try to stick close to God. And I just ask God to give me strength. Um, my father's been gone since 2016. It is 2024. And I'm going to tell y'all, I walked into my house Saturday and I instantly thought about him. And my friend that was there that knew my father, he said, because my father's name was Curtis, and he called my father Kurt. He said, oh, he said, he said, oh, he said, boy, he said, I wish Kurt was here to see this. He said, I wish he was here to see his baby girl do this. And I wanted to burst out into tears because <sighs> you know, sometimes you just wonder like, do they see you? You know, are they proud of you? Um, sometimes it's just hard. But uh, You know, I think about all the tragic, violent things that I've had to experience in my life. And, you know, it's been, it's been rough. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, I'm trying not to make this fall on the floor. It's been rough. But, uh, I serve a good God. And, um... I just keep praying. I just keep praying. And I just keep saying, you know, and not to mention my two aunts who passed of cancer. 
there was my mother's mother had nine kids. I don't know what happened. It just clicked off. That's weird. Anyway, all my uncles are still living, but my two aunts died of cancer. And both of them died to me a horrible death. One cancer one aunt had some kind of form of stomach cancer. She died a horrible death. My other aunt had colon cancer. She suffered in some ways, you know. <sighs> Just both tragic, you know. But, um, yeah, so to answer your question, how have I gotten through? How have I overcame? Just being prayerful. I do suffer from depression. And I think that it's because of all of the things that have happened that I've had to experience. You know, um, but I just keep praying. I just keep praying. I just keep praying. I just keep praying. And that's all anybody can do. You know, I, and, and I, I, so I, I'm going to talk about that. And then, you know, I'll talk to you all tomorrow about you know, how I've e even gotten to this far, you know, of buying a house, you know what I'm saying? Um, <sighs> you know, I wanted to quit this job a long time ago because I was doing something else that I hated. And I thank God that I listened to my father tell me not to quit. I thank God, I thank God. Because the money I make I need this money, you know what I'm saying? Because it is just me, you know? I don't have a significant other. And I will be honest with you all, I don't think that I ever will have a significant other. I don't think I, I don't, I really don't think I will ever get married. Um, you know, I just have someone that's a friend, but we not in a relationship. And you know, and, and to speak on that, I've kind of like, I just, I just deal with him as a friend. You know, I don't, I, I think I was, I've been so focused on buying this house. I haven't had time to really put a lot of energy and thought into him anymore. And so we're just that, you know, um, you know, he, he has apologized more than once for how he did things or what things that he said or whatever. Um, I think he's dealing with some trauma. When I when I'm when I'm he's going through something right now, but you know, when we're together, I feel like he's going through some trauma and he's dealing with some stuff. You know, men are very secretive about how they feel. They don't come out and tell you, you know. They don't share, you know, and um and so he's trusting me a little bit more because he's sharing more. So sometimes I'm around him and I can tell he, something is, he's going through something. He's quiet, you know. Um, so I just have left him alone. You know, I've left him alone. And we just deal with each other. You know, we talk every day. We see each, we back to seeing each other. We've gone out. You know, we spend time, um, you know, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to ever get married. I really don't ever think I will. And I've come to accept that. And I've come to be okay with that, you know, because, what I mean, I got it. You know, what can you do? You know, people say, oh, don't say that. God is going to send you somebody. I'm not saying that it can't happen. And I'm not saying I don't believe God. Because, you know, um, I've, I've, you know, I didn't think I could get a house. And I did. And, you know, God just, you know, he blesses. He has blessed me tremendously. But for some reason, when it comes to relationships, that I can't get right. I can't, I, I'm just not fortunate. Like some women, they get men and they get asked, uh, 
to get married two and three times. They've been married two or three times. That that ain't that's not my story. I I never had I never been successful in that area. And at the age that I'm at now, I just I just I don't I've I've not I'm not gonna say to you all that I've given up, but I've come to accept that marriage may not ever happen for me. Um, having a meaningful relationship may never ever happen for me. I, I I told you all in another video. I've never had one, so I don't even know what that looked like. You know, I don't even know what that feel like. I was in a relationship, <laughs> I, but I was the only one in the relationship. They weren't in no relationship with me, so I don't even know. I don't even know what that feel like. You know, I if if that if if a man came into my life right now and started treating me really good and adoring me and whatever I, I wouldn't even know how to I wouldn't even know how to respond or react to it I wouldn't I wouldn't even know I would be completely clueless on how to even deal with a man that was like that you know I, I wouldn't even know um but I've had a lot of great things happen in my life and I thank and praise God for that. So with that being said, we're gonna pick this up tomorrow, Wednesday. I hope you all have a great, great day. Please pray for the people in Baltimore. Um, and just pray for your city and your town. <sighs> we're just gonna keep, keep praying for everybody. Okay, have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.